Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and we're back to do part two of the string sew along. And I am now working with setting triangles and corner triangles. <music> Even though this looks like a lot of math, I'm here to tell you that you don't have to do any math. You can just use a chart and I will provide you a chart. The charts are available anywhere online if you just Google setting triangles chart. Um, but I do want you to understand just in case you find a chart that doesn't have a particular measurement or you're in an off measurement like you have blocks that finish at 12 and 1 quarter. And that's not a normal size for blocks to be, but that's what you're working with. Then you will need to know this particular formula. So, setting triangles. We're here with the purple side. And we're going to ignore everything that's in the blue, the red, and the brown. We're just going to talk about what the formula is. The formula for a setting triangle is a finished block size. And we know that our finished block size is 8 inches times 1.41. That will give you the finished diagonal of a block. So right here, I have multiplied 8 times 1.41. And that equals 11.28. Okay. So then once you get this finished diagonal, we'll back to the purple. We're going to take that finished diagonal and we're going to add one and a quarter or 1.25 to this measurement. When I do that, when I add 11.28 plus 1.25, you end up with 12.53. If you round this number up, that equals 12 and 5 eighths. And so that is the finished size of the square that you need to cut. And then you're going to cut that square twice on the diagonal. So both diagonals will actually get a cut. Okay, so we're going to cut those. But since we've got the math here already, I'm going to go ahead and do the math for the corner triangle. So we can just get all the math out the way. And then you can just look at your charts. Okay, <laughs> so for corner triangles, you're going to take the finished diagonal and divide it by two. So if I go back over here, this finished diagonal, this was the formula. We've already calculated that for our blocks, which are 8 inches finished. Um, that is 11.28. So I took the 11.28 and divided that by 2. The answer to that is 5.64. And we're going to come back to this number. The next part of this calculation is that we have to add 7 eighths of an inch for the seam allowance. So this is the decimal 0.875 for a 7 eighths of an inch. When you add that to 5.64, you get 6.515, which equals 6 and 5 eighths of an inch. So keep that in mind. We're going to cut these things out. I'm actually going to show you two ways to cut setting triangles. And then I'm going to show you how to cut your corner triangles. So the first step that you want to do if you're needing squares to cut your pieces from, you have to first piece those squares. Now, I'm opting to piece my squares using the same strings that I used in my blocks or a combination of those strings that were used in my block. If you want, you can just cut this from one piece of fabric. You do not have to piece these if you do not want, but I like the look of it being pieced. So that's what we're going to do. I'm actually going to show you how to make your setting triangles using two different methods depending on how much fabric you have available. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to cut this square into 12 
and seven eighths, 12 and five eighths of an inch. I'm sorry. I'm going to cut this into 12 and five eighths of an inch. So I'm just moving down to 35 because I can use that number and then add my 12 and five eighths inch to that. So I am just going to use the lines on my mat to cut this. So I just squared up at 35. I'm going to go to Forty-seven and five eighths. Look like this is really tight. <laughs> right there. And right there. Okay. So I am going to go ahead and cut this off. Very close there. <laughs> and now I am going to rotate this one quarter turn and I'm going to do the same thing. Except that I want to cut so that I keep the most of my smallest strip set. So that's why I rotate it. So when I'm trimming off, I'm trimming off of the wider piece. We're up one side. And now I want to do five eighths of an inch here. Five eighths of an inch. And I know I'm in front of the camera, but I, this is the only way I can actually cut. Got a little string there. Okay. So now we have a 12 and 5 eighths inch square. And the next step that we need to do is just cut this twice diagonally. So I will also do that. Make sure you cut on the correct angle. So I cut one way diagonally and now I want to go back and cut the opposite side diagonally as well. I'm trying to cut this without moving my block but that may not be possible. So I'm just going to have to move it maybe if I just turn it like this on point. <laughs> and then since I'm working in such a small space here with my camera and my light. Okay, so on that corner and on that corner. And then we want to cut our final piece. And so what you will end up with is pieces that have your units going one way and then your units are also going the other way. But if you notice, if you're putting one set of pieces on your side and the other set of pieces on your top and bottom, then all of your pieces will be going in the same direction. So it really wouldn't be a problem. You could also alternate them when you put them together and just have them go uh, crossways up and down. So it doesn't really matter which way you do it. However, if you're one of those people that want all of your strips to go in one direction, you can make a strip set like you did in our part one where we made a strip set. And then we can make this strip set 
um, six and one half inches. So I'm just going to cut this strip set six and one half inches wide. So I'm just lining up a bottom line just so I know that I'm cutting square because these strings were not cut square to begin with. And if I don't have everything on the front and the back, then I will lay back and uh, cut again. Sliding my ruler over just a little. I want to make sure you square up both of them if you're cutting from a folded edge. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and cut this into six and one half inches. Now, what do you do with that? That's where this ruler from Quilt Easy comes in. It's a flipping set, is what it's called. And what you do with it is that you use it to cut setting triangles when you don't want them to be, if they're piece and you don't want them to be turned. Or if you don't have enough fabric to cut the large blocks, then all you would need to have is six and a half inches of fabric. And so what happens is, once you cut your strip set, you're going to lay this ruler. This ruler actually comes folded like that for packaging. And then you open it up and you're actually having lines. And on the line, it tells you what size to cut. So for this block, and I'm sure this is not going to be visible on the screen here. Let me see if I can find a piece of paper. So here I have inserted a piece of paper here. And it says for an eight inch finished block that I need to cut a six and a half inch strip. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then we will compare this with the other, um, with the other piece that I just cut. It's been a while since I've used this ruler. So I'm not quite sure. But I have my line for the eight inch finished block along the bottom edge at the top, the point of the ruler is at the top. So from here, I just trim that side off and then I also trim this side off. Okay. And so I just need to Clip those. Again, I'm cutting a little bit backwards because of my camera set up here. And then what you're going to do is you just flip your ruler around and you continue to cut. However, I'm left-handed, so I'm just going to go ahead and flip this around <laughs> so that I can cut with my left hand on this side. Okay. So, I'm going to line up my 8 inch finish on the bottom edge along the entire strip set. I'm just looking over. I've got like a little bit, few stragglies over there. So, I'm just going to cut down to make sure I got everything. Okay? So, then this is block number, triangle number one, and this is triangle number two. Now, you will keep going down your strip set so you don't have to have a full strip set this wasn't a full strip set and you will just keep going down your strip set to finish cutting your triangle pieces so that's another way that you can cut So from that strip set, I was able to get um, three pieces out. Now let's compare that with the one where we cut from the squares. And see if they are 
approximately the same. So when I put this onto my piece on the back, I can see that my piece that I cut with this ruler, it will make the block float a little bit. And so if you don't want your blocks to float a little, then you might want to go ahead and cut them with the 12 inch. So the actual mathematical air, the mathematical one that we cut is more accurate than the one that we cut um, with the flip and set ruler. So for this, you're going to need 20 setting triangles. So you need to sew enough strip sets so that you can get 20 setting triangles. Okay. So for our corner units, I'm going to see if I can use our leftover pieces to cut two units that are six and five eighths inches. So this one is my first one. And I want to cut six and five eighths inch. And just trying to eyeball where that would fall. Okay, I think I like it right there. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that on two ends. Okay, I'm going to rotate my mat. So I just cut on these two ends and now I want to square this up to six and five eighths. So that's six and a half, six and five eighths there. So I've got six and five eighths on the bottom and six and five eighths inches going up. So I'm going to cut off my biggest piece first so I can keep that <laughs> and do the side. So now I have one of my six and a half inch squares. All I have to do to this square is go ahead and just cut this square in half on the diagonal. Six and five eighths inch square that I'm now going to cut in half on the diagonal. And we want to repeat that twice because we need two squares to make four corners. See if I can get another one out of here. Looks like we will make it. Trying to see where my six and five eighths will fall to know where I want to put my. So, right there is good. I'm trying to make it so that I'm not going to have like a very skinny strip piece left. So, we're going to cut this off. Get our big piece off first and then we're going to rotate this and now we're going to square it up to six and five eighths of an inch six and one half six and five eighths it's right there over for six and five eighths so Right there is where I want to cut. Okay. And then last step again is to cut this piece in half. Corner to corner. And there we go with our four corner pieces. I did just want to show you that there was another way of doing that with the strip set ruler. And you don't have to have this flip and set ruler. You can actually just use the 45 degree markings on your long rulers like this one. You can actually just use the 45 degree marking. You don't have to have a special tool to do this method either. So that's it for this video. We'll come back with part three where we'll be cutting our plain squares, and then start sewing our quilt top together. Thank you all so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Share my channel with your other quilting friends, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye, T-Quilters. Stay blessed.